Romance of the Three Kingdoms Chapter 12 Tao Qian tries to hand over governorship to Xuanda three times. Chao Chao battles Lu Bu. It is the warrior Xiao Dun who comes to Chao's rescue. Gathering a troop about him, he charges at Lu Bu. The battle rages until a heavy storm brings the fighting to an end, and each side retreats to its own camp. Frustrated and embittered, Lu Bu is determined to finish off Chao Chao. He has a letter written and sent to Chao Chao as if it were a secret message. It claims to come from one of the most influential citizens of Puyang and says that Lu Bu and his forces have left, and the city is ready to be taken. Fooled by this letter, Chao Chao is lured into what appears to be an almost empty city. But no sooner is he well inside than the trap is sprung. From every direction, from north and south, from east and west, Lu Bu's men emerge from hiding and bear down upon the enemy troops. In desperation, as his army is annihilated around him, Chao Chao dashes from to gate to gate, trying to escape. No matter which of the city gates, north or south, he tries, Lu Bu's men drive him back. Realizing what is happening, Chao's generals try to break through to rescue him but are driven back. Now in utter despair Chao Chao tries once more to escape by slipping through the north gate. As he approaches, who should ride up but Lu Bu, covering his face, Chao Chao hopes he will not be spotted. Imagine his horror when Lu Bu actually rides up and bangs him on his helmet with his halberd and asks where Chao Chao is. Chao Chao points to a horse and rider disappearing into the distance and says, that's him up there, sir. Lu Bu rides off in hot pursuit, and Chao Chao turns and rides for his life towards the east gate. As he approaches the east gate, Gan Wei appears beside him and slashes a pathway through the soldiers, creating utter chaos. But just as Chao Chao is riding under the gate a burning wooden beam crashes down upon his horse. Chao Chao tries to fend off the burning beam with his arm but is badly burned in the process. In real pain and shock, he seems about to fall. Once again he is rescued by Gian Wei, who takes control of Chao's horse, and through the gate they charge to safety. By stages, moving as stealthily as possible, they get beyond the battle scene until at last they are able to make their way back to their camp. In the light of such a disaster and such a trick, Chao Chao discusses with his staff what to do next. It is decided that they will resort to such tricks of their own. Chao Chao's men spread the rumor that Chao Chao has died. Assuming that this will mean Chao's men will be in chaos and distress at such a turn of events, Lu Bu decides to attack. This time it is Lu Bu who is caught in a trap, and his men are overwhelmed. Lu Bu barely escapes with his life. Neither side has gained the upper hand. It is in effect a stalemate. And so it is that a truce is declared between them. Meanwhile, back in Shuzhou, Tao Qian is on his deathbed and once again asks Xuanda to take over as governor. Once again he refuses, even when Tao Qian dies pleading with him with his last breath. It is only when the people of the city come themselves and beg him that he agrees. However, he only agrees to do so on a temporary basis. With the threat from Lu Bu contained, Chao Chao returns to his consuming desire to try to capture Shuzhou, in order to punish those whom he believes have murdered his family. But he is persuaded that the time is not right. So instead he attacks and wipes out a rebel army of yellow headbands and then suddenly advances upon Puyang and drives out Lu Bu. He goes on to capture most of the northeast. But Lu Bu is not finished. Or is he? Read on.